Thank you again for joining us today. Do you realize that we've been meeting like this for a year? Matter of fact, just over a year. And so you can go on um, our Facebook or you can go on YouTube. You can go on our website, Bible Truth and Prophecy Now, or we call it btip.org. And uh, you can enjoy 52 lessons that we've done on prophecy and on future events that God has predicted in the Bible. But today we want to look at something I think is very timely and very uh, important for where we're living today. And so I'm calling it the lies, the deceptions that you see in the last days. We have a lot of people that are saying something is a, a fact only to find out that it's fake. But here's the encouraging news and here's the contrast that we want to make in our program today. You see, we have God's Word, and so we know God's plan. And so just as God has a plan, well, Satan has a plan, and that plan of God is right on schedule, and that plan of Satan is also right on schedule. And so that's our subject. That's the thing that we want to put our mind on today and to see if it can be confirmed by God's Word. You see, we've been looking at God has a plan. Matter of fact, as we've been studying this, we, we went through a number of lessons. You'll find these on our, our webpage. We studied the rapture, the tribulation, the battle of Armageddon. I really enjoyed looking afresh at the millennial kingdom and the great white throne judgment, and then God's plan, the new heaven and the new earth. All those are the, the plan of God. You see, God has a plan. And in God's plan, this is to bring the gift of salvation to, to you and me into, into the whole world that would come to Him, saying, I need a Savior, I need a Redeemer. And so any person who would accept Jesus Christ as payment for their sin by the shed blood of Jesus on the cross, His death, His burial, God says, I will give you the gift of salvation. That's the plan of God. And we've been looking at how God brings that to us in such a marvelous way. But you see, Satan also has a plan. And in Satan's plan, it started in the Garden of Eden. And his plan was to try to outsmart and to outmaneuver maneuver Jesus Christ. Can you believe that, that Satan would have, the, I can say, the audacity to try that? You see, Satan's plan is going to be filled with detours and, and lies and, and every possible way to deceive people. Why? Because, you see, he's very jealous of the fellowship that God wants to have with those of us who have received Christ as their Savior. In Satan's plan, here's what he does. He takes things that are strange, he th takes things that are weird, things that are distorted, and he tries to, to twist those in such a way that they say, well, maybe that's not so bad. Listen, that's the plan of Satan, and we want to show what a contrast it is, and I want to show you how the Bible talks about exactly the plan of Satan that's going on right now at this present time. Let's look at it this way. God's plan is based on God's Word. And in John 14, 6, a verse that we've used many times in our program is this. Jesus said, I am the way, not a way, but He's the way. He's the truth, and He's the life. Three important things about Jesus Christ. We've studied those in detail, but I'm sure that you remember them as we mention them. And Satan's plan is just the opposite to God. You see, he appeared in the Garden of Eden as, as a serpent. And so here's Satan's plan, and Satan's plan is based on the deception, the lie, and death. Do you, do you see what a contrast the plan of God is for man versus the plan of Satan for man? Instead of the right way, Satan will deceive you into a, a wrong way. Instead of the truth, John 8.44 says that he was a liar from the beginning. Instead of giving you eternal life, he brings you eternal death. Listen, these two ways, these two plans, both of them in effect, both of them for the last days, I believe we're watching take place, play out before us. And the current events, we're watching it take place in daily life. We're watching it take place in, in our schools, in our workplaces, in our political scenes. All these things are going to show you that we must be living in the last days. So why do we think it is the last days? Well, God's plan is already at work. It's already set in motion. And we see current events that confirm it. For example, remember, we did the program on the 10 indicators for the last days. We saw the nations that are surrounding Israel. We saw the fact that Israel was back in their own land and that Jerusalem was their capital. We saw the crops that are being grown. We saw the sacrifices being prepared. We, we saw all these things that God has said for over 2,500 years. They're taking place exactly as the Bible said for the last days. Matter of fact, here in Kansas, we're getting earthquakes. You know what? This week, a young man actually saw that God's Word said there's going to be earthquakes in different places. There's going to be quarantines and, and, uh, and pandemics. 
And, and this young man said, wow, you know what, we are living in those times, and he accepted Christ. You see, the Bible indicated what would be the last days, and God's plan is coming true. You could not arrange, I could not arrange for the right nations to be surrounding Israel, ready to invade in the Middle East, but it's there today. I couldn't arrange for all the things that, that God has indicated in the, let's say, in the, bringing about something called the New World Order, how that all the governments would, would give their power in the last days to a single man, to a single antichrist, but we're watching it take place in the world around us. So God's plan is in process, and the Bible said it will take place in the last days. Those things are being fulfilled. But you see, Satan, his plan is also set in motion. And the Bible talks about what Satan's plan is for the last days. And I believe when you see it with me today, you're going to say, wow, this really is taking place before my very eyes. Now, let's begin with the passage in 1 Timothy chapter 4. And what an expression. It says this, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. That's quite a statement, isn't it? Clearly, notice this, it's for the last days, departing from the faith. We're watching that take place. Giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of demons. That's exactly how you describe what we're going to look at it here in just a few minutes. That's taking place right now all around us. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Conscience severed with a hot iron. You see, all the time I hear people say, well, maybe we'll repent. The people in the world will repent and come back to God. Maybe people in the United States will repent and come back to God. I don't know that I see that in the Bible. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know that I see a, a worldwide turning back to God. But thank God the gospel is still available to individuals. And I hope you will be one if you've never received Christ. And so this passage in 1 Timothy, the advice that, that the Apostle Paul gives to Timothy, it's incredible. He says, you'll know the last days, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by them who believe and know the truth. Wow. If I look at that, I'd say he's describing what we're watching take place in the world around us. They're not done. Second Timothy, just a, a few chapters later, again, here's what the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy. It says this, This know also that in the last die, days perilous times shall come. And then he goes on to talk about how that men and women will be without natural affections. What could describe our day and age more than that? False accusers, despisers of those that do good. And when you read that in complete list, I mean, it's unbelievable. Fierce, despisers of those that do good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power of it. From these, turn away. We're watching it in the name of religion, sometimes in the name of, uh, of, a, of a church, sometimes in the name of, of the Word of God. People are perverting the truth. The Bible said that would, is what's going to take place in the last days. So let's do this. In our study, let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. And we've looked at this passage on a number of occasions, but I think you'll see how it fits in so well with what we're studying. And remember, the Bible said this, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Subtle. In other words, set to deceive. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. It always begins with a questioning of what God said. And so when we look at what Satan's about to do, I want you to notice this. Satan changed three things that God actually said. Now here's what he says. He says, but of the fruit of the trees, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. He changed what God said. That's not what God said. The serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. He, he contradicted what God said. And then it goes on to say, For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. No, God said he made man in the image of God, but he didn't say that we would be as God or like God. You see, that's the lie of the New Age movement. And so then, a serious thing occurs. Satan challenging what God said by simply adding to it, by simply putting one word in there, he said, no, you're not going to die. By, by changing what God said, he completely distorted the message. You see how important a word can be or a phrase can be? And so here is Eve. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, 
Verse 6, the woman saw that the fruit was good. I wonder what side of the fruit she was looking at. Because the fruit was not good. God does not hold anything good from us. God withholds evil from us. And so she saw the part that looked good. So the lust of the eye she saw. You see, that's taking place today. We're being deceived by the lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh. She saw there was good for food. She said, God is holding back. Here's good food, and, and I want good food. I'm tired of eating this, the same old thing. And so, so this tree, this is going to be the thing that's going to set me to a, a, a higher level. The pride of life. Satan said, you know what? This will make you wise. Wow. You know what it did? It completely broke the fellowship that God had with mankind. And Satan was delighted. You see, that was the plan of, of Satan. Satan knew that a holy God would be offended by one sin. And if he could just introduce one sin, as simple as it might seem to us today to, to take a piece of fruit and to eat it, as simple as it might be, it was a sin. And in the presence of a holy God, the fellowship was broken. And so, why did Satan want this? He wanted to break the fellowship with God. He was jealous that we had fellowship with God, and, and he was barred. He was kicked out of heaven. And so, through lies, through deceptions, through twisting the truth, Satan introduced Mankind to sin, and man fell for it. Wow. Changed what God said, added to what God said, just, just contradicted what God said. It was enough. Now, I think that as we look at that pattern, we find it so prevalent today. Let me show you what I mean. Let's just look at the idea of perversion. Because when we read 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, you have to admit that the things that are listed there, they're perversion. Now, I know today we're, we're almost afraid to say that it's wrong, but it is. You know, here's how we know. The Bible says it's wrong. And so we've gone in a completely unparalleled direction from God's Word. I just read this week that Miss Nevada, the, 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 the person that won Miss Nevada, is a male transgender. Let me tell you, that is sick. That's perversion. That's wrong. Why are we afraid to say it's wrong? It certainly would not stand the test of God's Word, would it? But he said in the last days, you know, because the idea of men and women deserting their, their own sexual uh, orientation as born by God, by changing, by having incredible surgeries to, how perverse can it be? And the Bible said in the last days, you know, it will not only take place, but it will be accepted. Why aren't people up in arms about it? Or maybe this, the, the Grammy Awards. I didn't watch them. I watched some of the, the, the news clips from them. I cannot tell you, I've never seen something more perverse and perverted than that. And, and that's how we announce things that, are, that win awards. And at the same time, we're offended by, by Mr. Potato Head, or by Piffy Le Pew, or, or Dumbo, or, or Dr. Seuss. Do, do you understand? We've completely gone off the deep end. I, I, I'm, I'm just shocked how, how, we, how we slid down the hill so fast. Why is it that they take a drag queen to read to children on a library day? I, I heard this last week. I, I actually saw the video where they have a gay ABC book. And they were reading the gay ABC book to a little child. And they kept asking the little child, do you like your gay ABC book? What would be, what, how could they introduce that to someone just learning their ABCs? Oh, they did. For example, what is the letter Q for? And they said queer, uh, as though that's something to be proud of. What is the word, the letter L for? They said lesbian. And, and, and what is the word K for? It's kind. And she said, do you like the gay ABC book? He said, I like my gay ABC book. Listen, folks, that's perversion. And God said it would occur in the last days. We're watching God's plan, and the nations are lined up. Everything is taking place. And now we're watching Satan's plan for deception, for lies to bring people to death. And I believe that we're right in the crux of this very moment when Jesus Christ could come back for his church. God is not going to continue to tolerate this. I, I stand shocked. An elected official, Chuck Schumer, his niece, very publicly is, is for abortion. The, the, the lewdness of, of what she would put out for everyone to see, I stand appalled at it. It's disgusting. Or, or how about this? The, the pick person for the deputy director of the Human and Health Services branch. I mean, think about that position. And this is a, a transgender. 
what are we thinking? Has our country completely lost its mind? You see, everything that was decent and normal, Satan brings a lie. Why? Because it's the last days and he's in the business of, of deceiving people, twisting the truth. And he wants to bring people to eternal death. God's plan is so different. And so it has to do with perversion. I think Satan's plan is opposite of God's plan. It's against all common sense. Let me tell you, everything we just talked about is against all common sense. And it's opposed to God's plan because God's plan is something that's good and proper and moral. And these things are despicable. They're perversion in every sense of the word. And then we come to the idea of schools. Wow, this is really something. We, we've just gone through a time and, and uh, some schools, here's a picture of one. The plexiglass shields are so big and bulky the students can't even see the teacher or the blackboard. Uh, where's our common sense? Or it even goes this way. The teachers' union, being such a large contributor to, to dreaming about socialism, they won't teach. There were several cities. Besides the salary for the teacher, I'm not opposed to that. I'm an educator. So anytime you can give a good salary to a teacher, I'm all for it. But can you imagine teachers getting a salary, and now they're going to be offered a bonus. In one city, it was going to be up to $25,000 if the teachers would just come in one or two mornings a week to teach students. That's their job. That's what they do for a living. Why in the world would we give a bonus for a person to come in and do their, their work? You know, all these things, it hurts the poorest students. It hurts the struggling students. It hurts the youngest students. It's unbelievable that we're allowing this to take place. Listen, if a person doesn't want to teach, fine, resign from your position because I think there will be people that will say, I will teach them. You see, it's against all common sense. It's opposite of God's plan. I was shocked when I heard that the criteria for, for having students, uh, students back in session is that 51% of the schools would be open for at least one day a week. That's ridiculous, folks. What is what about that makes sense? You see, God has a structure in his Bible. And I believe it's important for us to educate our children, to train them, to teach them. And we need to teach them in God's word as well. So Satan has a plan. It includes perversion. It includes taking things that are common sense and twisting them and distorting them. Here's another one that I, I just think this question is important to ask. Why do they hate the children? Time and time again, the things that are going on, the, the, it shows that they hate the children. Now, let me show you what I mean. Abortion. In the United States, about 1.2 abortions in the year 2017, I'm sure there's at least that many or more now. 1.2 million children, they ended their life. You see, for some reason, the lie of Satan, the, the distortion, the deception, all these things, it always hurts the children, always hurts the, the young and the poor. How many abortions worldwide? Well, 9.1 million from January the 1st uh, right until now. Okay, The World Health Organization says 40 to 50 million abortions this year, 125,000 abortions per day worldwide. Listen, this is crazy. This is unbelievable. Why do they hate the children? I'm going to read you a verse in a minute. And, and you're going to see what God's Word says. But right now, a kid is more likely to die of suicide than COVID. You see, we've really left common sense, and we've gone to something that's, that's far different, and I think far more severe. And I really believe it's the plan of Satan, because he's against the children. Matthew chapter 18, what a text. The whole chapter would be good, but for the sake of time, listen as I read to you in chapter 18 of Matthew, verse 6 and 7. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones who believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hung about his neck and that he were drowned in the, deep, in the depths of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to the man by whom these offenses come. What a strong warning. I, I would hate to be those that are doing this abortion. I would hate to be those that are, that are persecuting children in, in so many different ways. The, the passage goes on. And it says this in, in verse uh, 10. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father who is in heaven. You see the special place that God places on children? 
And, and Jesus even said this, suffer the little children to come unto me. Think of that, that, that little child son. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Listen, there's a special love. God specially presents the plan of salvation even to children. And then it goes on to say this in verse 14. Even so, it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Now these are pretty strong statements because here's what I show you is that it's against all common sense and it's certainly against the plan of God. Do you see that Satan's plan is totally opposed to everything that God has that, that would be right? Here's another plan of Satan. It's, I call it the fence plan. What's interesting to me is we have a, a fence around the, the White House and the, around the Capitol building. Now, this fence around the Capitol building, I don't know that it's such a big threat. And yet we have so many so many of our, our guardsmen there. But the same time they want a fence around the Capitol building, they want to take the fence down on the southern border. Again, I say, why do they pick on, on the children? Because you see, when they tear that down, huge number of these people have COVID. We've just gone through a, a year of our life trying to stamp out COVID in our country and around the world. We've spent billions, I guess I should say trillions of dollars on, on, on how to rid this incredible disease. And now we're opening up our borders and we're allowing COVID to come in. That's just part of the problem. We bring them in to horrible conditions. I, I thought that we were trying to treat people humane. I thought the point was to, to help people that were politically struggling or are, there was a coup going on. I, I look at what's taking place in Burma and wow, my, my heart aches. I'm not against people who, who live in another country. That's why we have mission schools in a number of countries. That's why we do missionary work because thank God that the gospel is open to these people. But isn't it amazing that we're actually allowing drug dealers, human traffickers, terrorists, we're allowing them to come in. Do you understand that the human traffickers, I mean, these are people that are marching across the border with one, two, and three-year-old children. They're getting paid huge sums of money. It's a multi-million, actually, it's a billion-dollar business. We're working right into the hand of the drug dealers and drug traffickers. Folks, don't you see that this defies common sense? It's against all common sense. It's opposed to the plan of God. God would have... He spoke a threat to those that would abuse children. That's exactly what's taking place. Now, 25,000 people are waiting to get in. And in America, there's probably 10 times that number of people that are waiting for a job. Matter of fact, some of my students said, wow, you know what? Maybe we should go out of America, come in at the southern border, because if we do, we're going to have free health insurance. We're going to have free college education. Uh, you know, do you see we've twisted it? We've taken something that should be common sense. Here's why. Because you see, Satan's plan is that of confusion. You see, Satan's plan is fear. Now, let's talk about the, the contrast for just a moment. Because Satan knows that if he can disrupt our society, if he can install fear, if he can control by fear, that's exactly the way that Revelation chapter 13 says the Antichrist comes to power. He comes to power by distorting the truth. We're going to see in a future program, perhaps next week, I'm going to show you that the Bible says expressly exactly what the, the Satan and the Antichrist will say to bring about this idea of fear and how they're going to gain control. That's his only way to do it. He wants to make it so you can't buy or sell or trade unless you conform to, to his policies and his power. And so Satan loves the disruption. He loves the confusion. He loves the fear factor. If he can introduce fear, he certainly will. Have no fear. Your healthcare hero is here. And, and they talk about the, the whole thing is to scare you to death. But listen to what John chapter 14, verse 1 and 2 say. Here's what Jesus said. Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, and he did, I will come again. He brings you comfort. He brings you joy. You see the contrast the plan of the devil is against all common sense. It's opposed to the plan of God. God's plan is one of comfort, bringing to you eternal life. And so looking at these things, do you see how the plan of God is in motion? Listen, the nations are set around the world exactly as the Bible said would be in the last days, according to Ezekiel chapter 34 through 40. 
Israel is in its very place that God said it would be based on the prophets of old. The search for a sacrifice, it's going on right now. Everything is set up exactly as God's plan says. Even the devil's plan says that we're living in the last days. And so my question is this, are you ready? I have a good friend, really it's a good friend on Facebook. His name is Tom Calhoun. And here's a quote from him. The USA has replaced the God of the founding fathers with the false gods of self, convenience, uh, lust, power, sex, and greed. And that's exactly what we've done just on pace for the last days. I want us to turn to, to one last passage today, and it's such an important one. It's in the book of, of Romans, Romans chapter 1, and, and I want to read several verses from chapter 1 and all the way through chapter 3. But the reason I'm doing this is because, you see, the Bible talks about six woes. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, let, let me read that before we read our, our section in, in Romans. But in Isaiah chapter 5, there's a powerful statement that's made. And in this passage of Isaiah 5, it's, uh, there's six woes for Israel. And so throughout this, this particular chapter, it'll say woe and woe and woe. Listen to one of the woes in verse 20. Woe unto them who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Doesn't that describe what's taking place today? And so in Romans chapter 1, listen to what it says, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. And then a little later in verse 24. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever, amen. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did exchange the natural use for that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was fitting even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are unseemly. And the Bible is, is very clear about this. Verse 32, it says this, that they, knowing the judgment of God, they committed such things and are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in doing them. And then it goes on chapter two, he says, thou art inexcusable, O man. My friend, God hasn't changed. Verse 16 of chapter 2, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Wow, we're living in that time, aren't we? John, our revelation uh, speaks of, of how in the last days people will be deceived. Jesus warned in the gospels how people would be deceived. The epistles say, here are the conditions of the last days. We've read those charges in Timothy and we know they're coming true. And then Romans chapter three, as it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none that understands, there's none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. You know what? Wouldn't that be a, a horrible way to end our program? Because I'm happy to tell you that in chapter three, listen to this, verse 23 and 24, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified, listen, freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, God gives to us eternal life. Aren't you glad? You see, I believe that we are living in the last days. I think we've seen the plan of God for Israel, for the nations. I think we're seeing the plan of Satan to deceive and to corrupt and to bring defilement and sin to the human race. And so now the choice is yours. The Bible says that there's going to come a time when, when conditions are just like this and Jesus Christ is going to come back. It's called the rapture, the catching out of the church. Some may die before the rapture occurs. And I think Jesus could come in any minute. I, I warn you today, what are you trusting on to go to heaven? Because otherwise, you know what? You're going to be judged with our society that's full of people that have, that have distorted and abused children who have done sin and refused to repent, who have turned the natural use of, of men and women against what God designed us for. 
And he says, thou art inexcusable, O man, but aren't you glad that there's hope right now for individuals? I can't wait for the world to, to respond and to repent. But you know what? God patiently waits for individuals to come. And I'm hoping that you might be one of those individuals. Listen to what God says. He says this, admit that you're a sinner. I agree with what the Bible has said about mankind, that we're all sinners. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. But thank God we have to not only admit that, but we have to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the remedy for sin. Jesus Christ is the one who had no sin, huh, but he went to the cross. He died. He shed his blood. He was buried. He rose again, exactly as the Bible said, exactly as God's plan said. And then the final thing is to personally accept Jesus Christ as the payment for your sin. That's what I did. That's why I'm on my way to heaven. And I look around me that all that's taking place, I say, wow, the plan of God is right on schedule and the plan of the devil is right on schedule. And here's what I know. I know that God's plan will win over the devil's. My friend, today, take yourself out of the plight of the devil. Take yourself out of, out of his lies and deceptions. Take yourself out of the, his plan for death and come to Jesus who said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I'm the life. Be saved today. That way you'll be ready. That way you'll have no fear because you'll know that you belong to the God of heaven. You're redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we come to you today and we thank you for the plan of God that it will triumph over the plan of the devil. And Father, we look at all that's taking place and, and what a mess we live in today. Men trying to be women, women trying to be men, homosexuality endorsed. Father, there's so many things that go against common sense and so many things that go against the plan of God. Father, help us to understand that God's word is your plan. And Father, we're excited to know that we're living in the last days, but Father, we pray that even now, some will come to Christ, and Father, others will live for him, knowing that the word of God is true, and that Jesus will be coming soon. We thank you for that promise. We thank you for our salvation. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.